Saint Mark, the evangelist, and if you are a disciple, may his blessing be with us. Amen. Lord God and Savior, King of Lords. Christ, the Son of the living God, to you be glory, forever, glory is due to our God, unto the age of all ages, amen. Glory to you, O Psalms of our teacher David, the prophet and king, may his holy blessings be with us, amen. Hear the voice of my supplications, the Lord is my strength and my shield. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord God, Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has bills above, and by the ruler of the demons, he cuts out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Assuredly, I say to you, all <coughs> sins will be forgiven, the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is subject to eternal condemnation because they said he has an unclean spirit. And his brothers and his mother came and standing outside, they sent to him calling him and a multitude was sitting around him. And they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Dearly beloved, today being the first Sunday after the feast 
of our glorious Mother St. Mary, the Church presents to us a very unique reading in the Gospel of St. Mark. And today's Gospel, and in fact all of today's readings, starting from Vespers, are in honor of St. Mary. But in order to be able to understand how this gospel relates to the honor of St. Mary, we need to understand the parts of today's reading and how they come together to show this honor. And we need to understand how is it that three main parts in this gospel come together to give us that perspective of the honor of St. Mary. Now, Lord, grant us wisdom to be able to understand and live today's reading. So today's reading is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 3. And we see that our Lord had continued to perform miracles, of which the last was casting out a demon from a person. And this, in its own right, as a miracle, is very profound. And those that have witnessed it are continuing to follow Jesus to see more and more. And so we find our friends, the Pharisees, trying to dissuade the people from following Jesus. And they can't find fault with them. So what do they fabricate? They fabricate an accusation against our Lord that is worthy of stoning to death, which is practicing witchcraft. They say that this man can only cast out Satan through Satan. In the hope that the people would believe and this accusation would stick, and he would be worthy of death through stoning, as was the case in that time. But our Lord answers them with the examples of a house divided against itself cannot stand, and then an even more puzzling example about the strong man. No one can plunder a strong man's house unless he's first bound. And then from there we see that he, there was no further discussion with the Pharisees and he continued about his work. And later, St. Mary and it says his brothers who essentially were Jesus' cousins came looking for him. And they came looking for him because they were scared. They were scared in terms of everything that was happening and the attention that he was getting. They were scared for him, his sake, and their sake, being his relatives. And it's as if they were coming to him to say, what's happening? What's going on? Is this why you're here? Perhaps to say, can you tone it down just a little bit? We're not enjoying the heat that we're receiving. And then finally our Lord responds back to them and says, this is exactly why I'm here. This is exactly why I'm here. How does it all come together? And what does this have to do with St. Mary? The key is in verse 27. What does verse 27 say? Now no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man and then he will plunder his house. Our Lord never said anything unintentionally or without purpose. And the response in this verse was directed at the Pharisees in their accusation of him practicing witchcraft. And it's a fulfillment of a prophecy. In fact, it's a fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah 
chapter 49, verse 20, from verse 23. And what does the prophecy say? The prophecy says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, the mighty being the devil, or the captives of the righteous to be delivered, which is us? But thus says the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible will be delivered, for I'll contend with him who contends with you. And I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. When our Lord responded back to the Pharisees and saying, Bind me the strong man, he was referring to the work of the devil, who had everyone captive at that time and had everyone enslaved through death. And what Christ was saying to them is that, how can I, being the one that's going to come and bind the devil and allow you to be able to escape the snare of his trap and the death that has overcome you if I'm working by him and through him? You yourselves know that I am here to deliver you. And this is why they didn't respond to him anyway. But what's more amazing is not his response to them, is the response he gives to St. Mary and his cousins. Where he says to St. Mary and his cousins when they're coming to check up on him and saying, hey, is everything okay? You're upsetting everyone. You are tipping the apple cart. You are taking the social norms and destroying them, he said to them, I am here for these. Because who is my mother and my brothers? It is he who does the will of God that is my brother, my sister, and my mother. Which is a continuation of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, saying to them that I'm not only here to bind this strong man, and plunder his goods, which is you. But I'm doing that because I'm your loving father. I'm doing that because you are my children. I'm doing that to give you the same honor as I have given to my mother. Can you imagine that through his salvation, he's given us the same honor as St. Mary? who's above the cherubim and the seraphim and all the heavenly hosts, who's at the right hand of the Son, who intercedes on our behalf. The honor that we spent two weeks on in praising and glorification for her, in being the mother of the Theotokos, of the Pantocrator, we have the same honor. Yes, we have the same honor. We have the same honor because he came to bind the strong man and plunder his goods. So the question that we need to ask ourselves is now that this strong man has been bound. And that we to him are goods, not children. See the discrepancy? To Christ were his children, to the strong man, we're goods just a number, just a product, just something that's being stored. Why are we still attracted to the strong man? Why do we let him have power over us? Why is he, even though being bound and not over, able to overcome us with death, still have this presence in our life? And this comes back to the same reason that St. Mary and his cousins went to him. They were scared of the social expectation. Too many times in our life, 
we look around us and we feel this is normal. This is what we should be doing. And so we engage in it, forgetting that this is a trick of the strong man who just wants us to be bound with him as goods, as products, as a number that's stored next to him. Not even a person, not even a soul. We see in the Old Testament, the same happened with the nation of Israel when they left Egypt and God saved them and took them through the Red Sea and they waited for Moses 40 days and they said, surely the God that Moses is trying to bring us to is not as successful as the Egyptian gods. Look how rich they are. Look how mighty they are. Look at their empire. That's the social norm. Let's build a golden calf and worship it. Let's be like them. It was God that brought you out. It was God that freed you from the slavery. It was God that bound us from you. It's the same with us. I won't go through the different social norms. There are so many social norms that we know. The expectations, whether it be in the family, in the home, at work, at uni, even in service at church. The social norm of I've been serving for this long, so surely I should have this role. Or no, I can't serve at this bottom level because it's not the social norm. And we allow the strong man to again gain strength over us even though he's bound. And we forget that Christ saved us and broke the social norms. So today, we need to understand that if we are to attain the same glory that God granted us through his salvation, to have the same glory to not only be his children, but to be counted like his mother, as he said, we need to forget these social norms. We need to stop being obscured. We need to stop allowing the enticement of this strong man to bind us even though he's bound and keep us as a product in his kingdom. I'll share with you a little story that really brought this home to for me that happened last year when I went to a, uh, a parent-teacher night for my daughter. And surprisingly, I came across someone that I used to work with many, many years ago. And uh, he'd never seen me as a priest, so I went and said hello to him, and he was very surprised in terms of the path of life that God had chosen for me, but not surprised in the aspect of like questioning it, but he was glad for me. And then his wife came along and we started to chat. And the first question she asked me was, did you know that he was a Christian when you were working together? I said to her, well, you know how it is in the corporate world. You can't really talk about Christ. You can't talk about your religion. You can't talk about these types of things. It's taboo in the workplace. And she looked at him and she said, I am so upset with you. My heart sank. I thought I got the guy into trouble with his wife. I said to her, why are you upset with him? She said to me, because he hid his Christianity and his Christ from those that he worked with. She said to me, at work, I'm open about my faith. I don't push it on anyone, but they know. If something is wrong at work, I say to them, I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to go pray and come back. To the point now that when things go wrong, they ask me, please go pray and come back. Not the social norm. Not bound by the strong man. But living the life 
where Christ that gave her the freedom from the slavery and keeps the strong man down so that she can be counted amongst his brother, sister, and the glory of his honor. May our Lord grant us the wisdom, the zeal, and the ability to trust in his salvation, to trust that this strong man that walks around us like a roaring lion is truly bound and has no authority over us such that we can attain the same glory of the heavenlies, even St. Mary, and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.